So Jarris leading wire to wire, Marshall. Going up against Duke for the title. Oh, oh got him flipping up. Oh, uh, Duke's, got it, Duke's got it going his way. Oh, the crowd getting into it now. Steve Jarris as tournament leader, just one in four with a 209 average and five appearances. The 34-year-old out of Bolingbrook, Illinois. 6'1", 185. Great game. Confident strike from Jarris to start out the match. Look at Steve Jarris, a nice shoulder high backswing, really a kind of game that you would encourage just about anybody to try and emulate. You said earlier, one in four as a leader, and even in more pressure when he led wire to wire. That is a double to start off this championship match. You know, we show you Steve's wife, but uh, she's got a couple of eight-month-old twins she's taking care of, so she's here in the building, but uh, not on camera. She's That's, running around. That would be June Jarris. Duke trying to match Jarris. And does. Duke creeping up. He's 10th on the all-time money list. Walter Ray Jr., Williams Jr. up on top with 2,400,000, and Kevin M. Marshall Holman 7th. Still on the list. Well, second page. Yeah, but dropping like a rock. <laughs> so Duke trying to make it the first three. Could it be his day? Pins falling his way. Can we call that the Texas Tickler? Okay. Ball just barely touches the head pin. Pins collapse in the reaction. Thank you. Jarris with three in a row. Now let's take a look in the bag with Steve Jarris. Using the HPD with a four and a half inch pin. There's no extra hole. This ball gives Steve mid lane control. And because of the cover stock and the layout, it gives him a strong arc and a great reaction. Spare ball, which he doesn't want to use, that's the Brunswick target zone. Well, Jarris led wire to wire. He also picked up the 710 this week. It's kind of his week. Although, what a match, four in a row. And Duke has three. Well, neither player has missed. Jarris' shots have been superb. Duke's had a little bit of help from somewhere. Catching that light hit the last frame. And light and kicks it out. Four in a row for both players here in the title match. Check out the PBA's website at pbatour.com for the latest information, including schedules for upcoming tournaments, Brunswick's Insiders Report, links to other great bowling sites, and a recap of today's championship round. All that and more at pbatour.com. Well, Phil, I was just given a note from Butch Soper, our statistician. He says he crossed with Duke during the tournament and said that Duke got wrapped to death, couldn't get anything going his way. Maybe this is a little bit of a payback. He's carried a few early here. Five in a row. Duke with five. Jarris with four. It's easy to carry when you hit him there. <laughs> wow. Jarris averaged 226 on this television pair with a high game of a 299. Oh, Boy, Jarris is absolutely locked in. Where Duke is using all the pocket. Jarris is just high flush. Well, Jarris last year, Chattanooga tossed a 300 game on television, and next week's tournament's Chattanooga. He said he was just getting ready for next <laughs> week. <laughs> what a way to do it. <laughs> next week we'll be in Chattanooga. Brainerd Bowl trying to make it the 
first six. And he does it, kicking out the seven pin. So Steve Jarris with the first six. Norm Duke with the first five. Hairstyles come and go. But to get the most out of every style, you need hair that's full and thick. New Head & Shoulders Hair Endurance for Men. Well, we've got a barn burner here. Duke with the first five, Jarris with the first six. Duke up now in the sixth frame. Bringing it back, and he's got it. Both players with the first six. I'd like to show you what Norm was doing during the commercial break. A little bit of mental imagery. Thinking about what he needed to do when he came back. Well, it worked. Yeah, it's been working all right. Boy, a beautiful sunny day here in Dallas today. A bit uh, chilly in the 30s, but red hot on the lanes. Duke trying to make it seven. More importantly, for the lead. Well, you could see halfway down the lane, you could see it in his expression as he was standing there. He knew the ball didn't come off his hand properly. It did hit the pocket. But watch the six pin as it just lays in the channel. Doesn't come back out to knock out the 10. Our first spare opportunity, the championship match, and it comes in the seventh frame. It's tough to throw the first six and still be down in the match, but uh, Duke, picks, Duke picks up that 10 pin, and now Jarris with the first six. $10,000 bonus for a perfect game. Jarris half the way there. And the string stops at six for Steve Jarris. He leaves the four pin. This match all even in the seventh frame. Jarris with the spare ball. And I'll tell you what, that's why they use spare balls, folks. That ball was way left off his hand. Doesn't have any friction. It stayed there. If he'd used his strike ball, he'd have flagged that four pin to the left. All even as we head into the eighth frame. Jarris blowing it looked like in his finger holes and thumb hole. A little moisture, a little tacky feel. Better feel of the ball. Well, that's exactly where he wants to be living right there. Flush in the pocket. 